Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Just to let you know, Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a full set of Commander 2019 when it releases to one lucky winner. The contest will be running from July 12th until August 26th, and all you have to do to enter is either use my promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, no spaces, on an order of over $10 or more, or you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to Flipside Gaming. It's one entry per person, so good luck, have fun, and I hope you win. Today's game has us back at Wizard's Tower, and Skylar has rejoined us playing his Morophon deck. He keeps an Overgrown Tomb, an Enlightened Tutor, Breeding Pool, Athreos, a Scarab God, Kadama's Reach, and Hinterland Harbor. Aiden is also back playing his Gave deck, keeping three Forests, Somberwall Sage, Grizzly Salvage, Ashnod's Altar, and Devoted Druid. Skylar's buddy DJ is joining us, and he's brought his Ur Dragon deck, keeping Chromatic Lantern, Urza's Incubator, Sky Shroud Claim, Fractured Identity, Two Mountains, and an Island. And last but not least, we got Cam playing his Marin deck, and he keeps a Swamp, a Forest, a Soul Ring, a Buried Alive, a Fleshbag Marauder, Awakening Zone, and Golgari Rot Farm. Skylar wins the die roll, and starts us off. Skylar plays a tapped Overgrown Tomb, trying to blend in with his Abzan and Golgari opponents. Aiden plays a Forest and passes. Cam sets down the card he drew and plays a Swamp, casts Soul Ring, and then uses the ring to cast a face down card, a Golgari Signet. DJ plays a Mountain, passing. Skylar plays a Tap Breeding Pool and passes as well. Aiden plays a Swamp and pays 2 for Whisper of the Wilds. Cam plays a Forest and brings out that sweet turn 2 Marin. DJ drops another mountain, and passes. Skylar plays a Kadama's Reach, finding two basics, one for the field and one for his hand. Aiden plays another forest, and casts Somberwall Sage. He then drops a Viscera Seer before passing to Cam. Cam draws for turn, and casts Awakening Zone, followed by a Skullbriar. Moving to combat, he swings the Zombie Elemental at Skylar, dealing one, and giving Skullbriar a plus one plus one counter. DJ draws and plays an island. He casts Chromatic Lantern before passing to Skylar. Skylar plays a snow-covered plains for his land for turn, and pays four for an idol on a blossoms, drawing a card as it enters. He then passes to Aiden. Aiden taps two lands and the Sage for mana to cast Gave, who, when it comes in, gets five plus one plus one counters. He casts a slightly glared at Ashnod's altar, and then hits DJ for one with the Seer. On Cam's upkeep, he gains an Eldrazi token, which he represents with a Germ token. He plays a Swamp for turn, and casts Buried Alive to go and bin some creatures. He finds Dryad Arbor, Sakura Tribe Elder, and Viridian Emissary, putting them to the graveyard. He then sacrifices the Eldrazi for a Colorless, and gains an Experience Counter for Marin. This helps him pay for the Fleshbag Marauder, which has Skylar and Aiden sacrificing a creature as well. Cam gains a second experience counter as the Marauder dies. Cam then heads to combat, and the Skullbriar hits Skylar again for two this time, and gains another plus one plus one counter. At the end of turn, Cam brings back the Sakura Tribe Elder, and the guys then decide to formally introduce themselves. DJ plays a Sky Shroud Claim, finding two forest cards, and passes while searching. In the meantime, Skylar uses an Enlightened Tutor to go and find Solemnity and hopefully put it on top and deal with Cam. Cam also uses this time to sacrifice his Elder and gains an experience counter while finding a basic. Skylar draws the Solemnity for turn and plays a Rootbound Crag. He casts the enchantment, sadly not able to draw from it from his now dead Eidolon, and then drops Athreos before passing to Aiden. 
Aiden casts a main phase Grizzly Salvage and keeps a creature from the 5 he reveals. He then passes. Cam gains a Zeldrazi token on his upkeep and draws. He pays 5 in his main phase for Varaska the Unseen and blows up Solemnity before sacrificing the Eldrazi to gain another experience counter. He uses the Colorless to help pay for a Ramunap Excavator, but has no lands to play from the yard. Heading to combat, he swings the Skullbriar at DJ this time, dealing 3 and gaining the Elemental another plus 1 plus 1 counter. At the end of turn, Cam brings back his Elder again with Marin. DJ draws for turn and casts Urza's Incubator, naming dragons. This helps him pay less for Dromoka the Eternal, and he passes to Skylar. Skylar draws for turn, and we realize that Urza's Incubator, regardless of what is named, makes Morophon cost 2 less. Skylar taking full advantage of this, casts his commander, and names God as it enters. He then passes to Aiden. Aiden draws, and can't seem to find his lands. We do see a Rayhan hitting the field, who has 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him, and then he drops Devoted Druid. We then see the Druid's best friend in the whole world, Vizier of Remedies, hitting the field, and Aiden is threatening infinite green mana. Heading to combat, he swings Gave at Cam, who blocks with his Elder and sacrifices it before damage is dealt, going to find a basic and gaining an experience counter. Aiden then passes. Cam gains another Eldrazi token and sacrifices it, gaining another experience counter. He uses the Colorless to help pay for a Merciless Executioner, and this has everyone sacrifice a creature, which Aiden does by making a Sapper lane with Gave, and Cam lets the Executioner go to the bin, gaining another experience counter. He also upticks Frasca and heads to combat. He hits Aiden for 4, gaining the Skullbriar yet another counter, and moves to his end step. He once more brings back the Executioner, which resolves, gaining another counter, and Aiden's forced to sacrifice Rayhan, putting the counters onto Gave. DJ draws and plays a Glacial Fortress before tapping out to cast Elish Norn. She resolves and shuts down a lot of the problems that were about to happen. After that, DJ passes. Skylar casts his own Sky Shroud claim and finds two forest cards while he's passing. Aiden draws and just can't find that land. He heads to combat, swinging his commander at DJ for 5 commander damage. Moving to a second main phase, Harvest Season hits the stack, and Aiden goes to find a swamp. Camlin taps and gains a counter immediately because his Eldrazi dies thanks to Elish Norn. He upticks Frasca, and then casts Noxious Gearhulk to take out Elish Norn, gaining Cam 7 life. Heading to combat, he hits Aiden for 7, giving Skullbriar yet another counter. On his end step, he brings back the Executioner again, and Aiden makes a sapling with Gave and sacrifices it. DJ plays a rootbound crag as his land for turn, and then casts Crucible Fire and it hits the field. We then see a Savage Vent Maw come into play, and with nothing else, DJ passes. Skylar plays a Bow of Nylee in his main phase before passing to Aiden. Aiden plays a Forest and makes a Sapling token with Gave, using Cam's Germ token who's doing a lot of work for them this game. He sacrifices it to Alter, and uses the mana to help pay for Decree of Pain. This wipes the board, and draws Aiden a chunk of cards. Cam also adds a few experience counters, because he's pretty sure his curve doesn't go past 10, and stops there. Aiden then passes. Cam gains an Eldrazi token on his upkeep, and plays another Swamp. He pays 6 for Marin again, and then a Skull Clamp. He skull clamps the Eldrazi spawn, drawing two cards. Cam then upticks Frasca again and heads to the end step, bringing back Skullbriar before passing to DJ. DJ drops a forest for his turn and brings out the Ur Dragon in his main phase. He passes, and at the end of turn, Skylar activates his bow to put some cards on bottom of his library. Skylar draws, and plays a snow-covered plains. He brings back Morophon out, again, and names God. He then taps 2 to cast Ronus, and passes to Aiden. Aiden plays a plains, and casts Yavamaya Elder, and then an Elvish Mystic before passing. 
Cam untaps, gaining his Eldrazi germ token, and clamps it again in his main phase to draw two. He plays a Swamp for turn, and drops his own god, Bontu. He then casts Shouldred, and once more upticks Frasca. Heading to combat, Skullbriar goes at Aiden, who blocks his Elder, and sacrifices it to draw a card, and gets to go and find two basics to put to hand. Responding to his own ability though, Aiden uses Swords to Plowshares to exile Marin, which gives Cam some life before he passes to DJ. DJ loses Ur-Dragon on his upkeep to Shouldred, and casts Cultivate in his main phase before passing to Skylar. Skylar sacrifices Morophon and puts it to the command zone. He draws and casts Hazard to go along with Ronus. We then see a God Eternal Ketra hit in the field, and Skylar kicks himself for his bad sequencing. He does only have one card in hand, and he's able to swing Ronus and Hazard at Vraska. Vraska bites the bullet, and even with her ability trying to destroy them, the gods live on. He then passes to Aiden. Aiden loses the Mystic to the Shoulder trigger, and plays another Planes and casts Soul Ring. He uses it to help pay for Cathar's Crusade before passing to Cam. Cam gains his Germ Eldrazi and brings back his Sakura Tribe Elder. He recasts Marin in his main phase and puts Journey into Eternity on her. He sacrifices the Elder, going to find another basic, and then heads to combat. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Cam because he swings everything at Aiden for 16. He moves to his end step, and Cam's bring back the noxious Kierhulk, who comes in and targets Marin. Responding to the trigger, Aiden uses Nature's Claim to blow up the journey, and Marin gets destroyed, and Cam decides to have her go to the command zone. This has Cam gain 4 life from the claim, and 4 life from the Gear Hulk. DJ draws, and plays a Plains. He casts Kindred Discovery as it comes in, naming dragons. He then pays 5 for a tap door to nothingness, and I never realized how much I want someone to lose to it until just now. He then passes to Skylar. Skylar sacrifices Ronus on his upkeep to Shouldred, and asks Aiden if he's willing to pay 3 life to not let him return it to his hand. Since his life total is so low, Aiden is in a position to say no, and lets Ronus go back to Skylar's hand. Skylar then casts Heliod in his main phase, and then Ronus again. He's tempted to swing at DJ, but DJ promises not to use the first activation of the door on Skylar. Skylar also realizes he should have two zombie tokens from Aketra for casting Ronus and Heliod. He then heads to combat, and swings Aketra and Hazard at Cam, who takes the hit for 11. Aiden untaps, and drops a Plains, and brings back Gave. He then casts Avacyn's Pilgrim, who comes in and triggers the Crusade, and Aiden passes. Cam resolves his shoulder trigger, and brings back his Fleshbag Marauder. This has Skylar losing a zombie token, while Aiden makes a sapperling and sacrifices it instead of a creature, which also gives Aiden's creatures another counter from entering with the Crusade. Cam then puts the clamp onto his new Eldrazi spawn to draw two cards. He's digging for an answer to hopefully find for the door to nothingness that is most likely going to target him. He casts Viscera Seer, sacrificing four creatures and scrying one four times. He bottoms all of them before finally sacrificing the Seer itself. He bottoms that card as well. Cam then casts the Living Death, and they all exile cards from their yards, and then sacrifice what's on the board. This has Athreos triggering a bunch for Skylar, who puts all the targets on Cam. Cam just lets Skylar put them all to hand. Aiden also has some pretty wacky stuff going on, with all the creatures entering, triggering the Crusade. Please note, they do eventually realize that Elish Norn would have killed all of Aiden's board before getting the counters, and fix it, so don't worry. Rayhan does survive though, albeit Aiden doesn't add all the counters to him like he should have, regrettably. They also resolve the sacrifice triggers, and the noxious Gear Hulk destroys Elish Norn, gaining Cam more life. Always willing to help a friend out, Cam then uses Go for the Throat to take out Rayhan to spare Aiden any embarrassment. Moving to combat, he hits DJ for 7 with the Skullbriar, giving the elemental another counter, before passing turn. DJ untaps and immediately pays enough to activate the door, targeting Cam. This is the first time he's ever been able to manage it, and Cam is happy to sign the card after DJ asks him to. With nothing else, DJ passes. Skylar recasts a Ketra, and then Ronis, gaining a zombie token, and passes. Aiden re 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 recasts Gave, who gains a counter from the Crusade upon entering, and he passes. DJ recasts his commander as well, and draws from the Dekindra Discovery before passing turn. 
At the end of turn, Skylar uses the bow to gain some life. Skylar recasts Hazard in his main phase, gaining a zombie token from Aketra. He plays a hero's podium, which will help him dig, and also pumps most of his board by plus one plus one. He has too many cards in hand to swing Hazard, but Skylar is still able to swing the rest of his board at DJ, which consists of Oketra, Ronus, and the zombies. DJ then takes 4 from the zombies and 7 from Ronus for a total of 11 damage. With Oketra dying, Skylar targets Aiden with the Athreos trigger, and Aiden lets Skylar return the god to his hand. Skylar passes, and at the end of turn, things get weird with Aiden. He's able to make a sapperling with Gabe by removing a counter, and when it enters, puts a counter back onto Gabe and onto the sapperling as well. He can then sacrifice it to Ashnod's altar for two colorless mana, effectively making infinite colorless. This means he can make as many sapperling tokens as he wants, since as they enter, they replace the plus one plus one counter they cost on Gabe. He does this, and rather than pick a number, just dumps a bunch of dice onto the table. Aiden then draws her turn and casts a Moonlight Bargain in his main phase, looking at his top five. He keeps two of them, losing four life, and bins the three remaining. We then see him cast Eldamri's Call, and he goes to find a creature, revealing Blood Artist. With the loop he's demonstrated earlier, he's able to kill the table once the vampire resolves. Game review time! So right off the bat, let's get it clear, I love the fact that someone lost a door to nothingness. I'm sorry Cam, it was unfortunate it had to be you, but at the same time, I'm really happy we got it on camera. I do think Cam was the best target, since he was very clearly in the driver's seat since the get-go. DJ's deck just wanted to cast dragons, but it was very hard to do with the Fleshbag Marauder and Merciless Executioners coming back every time at the end of turn. Even Skylar's Sweet God Tribal deck, where the majority of them are indestructible, would have struggled against that. Speaking of Skylar, his God Tribal deck was fantastic, and it's a shame that Morophon wasn't out for longer. I like the fact that it reduces the cost of most of his gods to just being basically colorless, and I really love the fact that Skylar was able to catch that the Urza's Incubator, even though it was naming dragons, still helped reduce the cost of his commander. I think Aiden did a fantastic job of sort of sitting back, providing answers for the table, all the while bringing up his resources and getting himself to a position where he could combo out and win. I know for some people it's not the ideal way to win, but I think Aiden played it very well. He was definitely the underdog of the game, and it's great to see him come back and win. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.